Now at 11, a deadly weekend in Portland and a deadly year in general. Three new murders reported in the city since Friday. We'll look at the homicide rate in 2020 compared to last year. Dozens of moms take to the streets of Lake Oswego, marching in support of Black Lives Matter and responding to what they see as racism in that city. And it is another cold, cold night. Temperatures falling right now and could end up well below freezing by morning. How long you'll need to keep that extra layer handy. This is KGW News at 11. It has been an unusually violent year in the Portland area, and this weekend added to the toll. Three more people are dead in separate instances. Now homicide detectives are asking for your help to crack open the cases. Our man Tim Gordon reports. The police cars and flashing lights, all too common in Portland these days, as police investigate another set of deadly violent acts. Portland has suffered this year greatly. We've experienced as a city um, an increase in violence, the likes of which we haven't seen for many years. We're somewhere in the mid 40s this year for homicides, and the vast majority of those have come since the beginning of June. Compare that to a total of 36 homicides in Portland for all of last year. The latest one started late Friday night. Police and firefighters went to Northeast 148th and San Rafael streets for a vehicle fire. They found a person dead in the vehicle. The medical examiner says the death was a homicide. Then Saturday night, about 930, police went to a report of shots fired around Southeast 48th Avenue and Division Street. Later, a person who appeared to be shot showed up at a local hospital but died. Finally, just before 2 a.m. Sunday, a stabbing call at Southeast 12th and Oak. Officers and paramedics found a victim there and tried to save them, but the person later died. Lieutenant Greg Pashley with Portland Police says the violence seems to come in clusters that can be overwhelming for investigators. They want to get on top of that. They want to follow what leads they have in any particular case as quickly as possible. And that makes it difficult when all of a sudden another one is piled on and then another. Pashley says Portland's mayor has directed police to have officers and supervisors take on some investigations to ease the load. But police need your help, too. If you know anything about these homicides or any of the others unsolved in Portland. These cases are uh, so grave and the families that are left behind suffer so greatly. And so uh, the uh, detectives are always always interested in receiving whatever information might be out there. Our story at KGW.com has detectives names and numbers for these specific cases. You can call them directly, but there are other ways to report information. You can do it online through texts and emails, and you can remain anonymous. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Thanks, Tim. Turning now to the cold weather. Most parts of the central and southern Willamette Valley will likely see temps below freezing tonight. Let's bring in meteorologist Chris McGinnis. Chris, it's getting cold. You know, we're already there <laughs> in some cases. Wait till I show you the current temperature map, Pat. But yeah, the uh, the royal purple color here on the map here uh, indicating it is royally cold out there. We've got a freeze warning in effect for everywhere. Uh, basically west of the Cascade foothills all the way to the Oregon coast. Yes, that includes the beaches from 1 a.m. until 10 a.m. Monday. A hard freeze is likely. Lows could get as low as 22, 22 degrees in some cases to about 32 in areas where we might still maintain a little bit of a breeze overnight. Currently, we're 30 in Scappoose. Vancouver's now down to 32. There's still a little bit of a breeze, though, in Troutdale and downtown Portland. So you can see the temperatures there right now are 40. But look at that. Hillsborough is already down to 28. I believe that is now the current coldest reading of the fall so far in Hillsborough. And Salem sits at 34. Salem, you actually did get below freezing this morning, and you're likely to get well below freezing overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. So that's the headline. Freeze warning in effect. Temperatures could fall into the lower 20s. Monday's record low, by the way, at PDX, incidentally, is 30. We're going to be pretty close to that, I think. The average first freeze is November 15th. So, Pat, we're a little ahead of schedule for that, but I can tell you that despite the cold, we will enjoy plenty of sunshine and a lot less wind in the forecast. So tomorrow afternoon may actually wind up feeling pretty nice. The full forecast coming up in just a bit. Great. Thank you, Chris. Looking forward to that. Now to the pandemic. As more people move indoors due to the cold weather, health officials worry the coronavirus case numbers will get worse, and we're already seeing rising numbers in a lot of port parts of Oregon. In fact, the state recorded its highest number of new cases in a single day just this past Friday. That's the spike you see toward the right side of the graph today. 
Also today, Oregon added another 366 cases, bringing the total known number of infections in the state to more than 42,100. No new deaths were reported today. The statewide death toll remains at 653. COVID-19 is taking center stage in the presidential campaign with the election just nine days away, nine days. The virus is also infecting Vice President Mike Pence's inner circle. His chief of staff and at least three other aides now have tested positive for the virus, but Pence has not tested positive and is staying on the campaign trail. NBC's Jennifer Johnson has the latest. With just over a week to go until Election Day, all four candidates are crisscrossing the country. Even Vice President Mike Pence, whose chief of staff, Mark Short, and three other aides have tested positive for COVID-19. CDC guidelines say Pence, who had close contact with Short, should quarantine for 14 days. But Pence has been cleared by the White House Medical Unit, classified as an essential worker. Essential personnel, whether it's the Vice President of the United States or anyone else, but he's not has to continue on. The White House says Pence has tested negative and is taking precautions. As new cases of COVID-19 shatter daily records, over 166,000 Americans testing positive the past two days, the pandemic is front and center on the campaign trail. This is the greatest failure of any presidential administration in the history of America. But President Trump continues to downplay the pandemic while offering no proof that a vaccine could be just weeks away. We're rounding the turn. Even without the vaccines, we're rounding the turn. It's going to be over. Meanwhile, there's still no deal between Congress and the White House on another coronavirus stimulus aid package. But both sides are hopeful a deal can be reached this week. So we have to act. Uh, to do anything, though, that does not crush the virus is really official malfeasance. Politics aside, most medical experts warn the country is now at a dangerous tipping point as hospitalizations surge and new cases are rising in at least 41 states. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. And a reminder of important election deadlines. In Oregon, your ballot must arrive by 8 p.m. on Election Day, whether you mail it, drop it off, whatever. If you are mailing, that means this Tuesday, October 27th, probably should be your deadline for sending it so that it arrives on time. In Washington, you do have more options. If you're mailing in your ballot, it only needs to be postmarked by Election Day. If you're dropping it off, it's due by 8 p.m. And if you still need to register to vote and you want to register online or by mail, that deadline is tomorrow. Otherwise, you can walk up to the elections office in Washington state, register and vote right then and there. You just have to make sure you do it by 8 p.m. We will likely have a new Supreme Court justice by the end of tomorrow. The U.S. Senate today voted to advance nominee Amy Coney Barrett's final confirmation, despite objections from Democrats. The Democrats argue that the winner of the presidential election November 3rd should choose the nominee to fill Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's vacant seat. Barrett's confirmation would secure a conservative majority on the court for years to come. The final vote expected to take place tomorrow night.